Good morning, everyone. I'm Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez. Boy, is it a glorious day in Pacoima. Can we give today a big round of applause? Come on. I am really proud to be joined by the 1963 North Valley Broncos members, where today we are commemorating here at the intersection of Drone Field and Osborne, Broncos, uh, North Valley Broncos Square. So let's give it another big round of applause. Yeah. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, the game of baseball wasn't played the way that it was that is played today. The members of the North Valley Broncos were convened as a result of their parents that had to pool together resources to lease the lot that is behind us that enabled an all African American team to be able to do what every other child so often gets to do that we so often take for granted. And that's to come together and play baseball. A time-honored tradition for those of us here in the United States. Something that so many p kids could benefit from to learn the lessons and values of teamwork, of how we work together to help transform a community. These are the friendships and the collaborations that happened on this ball field many, many years ago. And today we're celebrating this incredible history because it was this team that not only as a result of the fortitude and insight of their parents to create an environment that allowed them to play ball. But this was the team that took it all the way to the World Series. <laughs> and it should have, well, that's okay, but we still got there. That's all that matters, okay? Because Bacoima, Bacoima went to the World Series, folks. <laughs> And so I just, I, you know, I want to take a moment. I gotta, I gotta thank a few people uh, really quickly. I want, you know, we're joined today by a couple of members of the original uh, 1963 uh, 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 North Valley Broncos. But 65? 65. Ah, excuse 65. me, my 65. My bad. I'm sorry. Okay, you're not that old. All right. We're none of us are. Um, but, uh, but also the Pacoima Historical Society. Uh, that is so important to our community to, to really uh, tell, our st tell our stories, track that history. Because so often communities like ours are overlooked and dismissed for the historical contributions that we make. We didn't just make history on the ball fields of Pacoima. We're doing it in every legislative body from Alex Padilla, our U.S. Senator, to Tony Cardenas, our congressman, to me being the third Latina on the history of the city council. We're all making history together and we're forging a path that is leaving the door open for generations to continue to enjoy and follow. And so I'm really proud to be joined this morning by Anthony Davis, a uh, former member uh, of the uh, North Valley Broncos and Anthony, I'd like to invite you to please say a few words. Well, good afternoon. Well, when I look at this corner, I think about the time when uh, I was nine years old and my mother said, we're going down to let you sign you up to play baseball at San Fernando Park. And we lived on the boundaries of Pacoima and San Fernando. And so, when she took me down to sign up, the woman looked at us, and a man was with her, and said to her, you can't play here. You gotta go across town to play. And this is where I ventured here. And so a lot of the black fathers got together, and you see this field behind us. I think the county leased it for like a couple of dollars for the year, and they formed a league, and that's where we all gathered and started honing our skills. If I don't have this park, I don't, be, I, I don't go on to be drafted by the Baltimore Orioles, go to USC and play on three national title teams. I started right here. And there's a lot of kids that started their, their careers here. And this is and right across the street there. We couldn't play at that park, if you can believe it or not. 
that was like a miniature Dodger Stadium because that was that it was so groomed. And we always looked at that field, that beautiful grass. We had gophers over here. And we had to play with the gophers. But still, that honed our skills. So I like to thank Monica Rodriguez and her staff for honoring this corner for that 1965 team. Also, Crystal Jackson, the Corman Historical Society. I'd like to thank her for keeping the history alive because it wouldn't be no 1965 if it wasn't for her, as far as I'm concerned. She's the one who contacted me. This is how I've become to meet Monica. And I, I really respect and honor what they've done for some 1965 kids that went all the way to New Bedford, Massachusetts under the segregation laws of the time. And we were little boys. We didn't really know what racism and segregation was. But we went forward our way and became established from Pacoima, California. So me standing here, I can go on and go on and talk about many different things. But this is something, this is very monumental. As a matter of fact, I've got a lot of awards in my life as an athlete. But this one I'm going to really cherish because this is where everything started for me. And I, you know, I just want to thank you all for showing up. I didn't know what the turnout would be. I just made sure I was going to be here. And I got here and had a nice parking spot for me right here in front of you guys. <laughs> so I'm here. So I just want to thank you all for coming. And, uh, and it's really emotional. I, I don't know what it is. I've spoken in front of many people. But this is very special to me. And then I'm going to have another one of our teammates come up and talk. And uh, he was a great ball player, too. I wish they had all have followed us. But, you know, we had different routes to take. So this is, this, this is wonderful. I want to thank you all. Thank you so much, Anthony. As he, as he said so well. That's right, we're making history over here. <laughs> you know, I think you said it best, is the opportunities that were afforded to you came as a result of the victories that you lived on these ball fields. And that is the same opportunity that we are leaving behind here for each and every child in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. Because they'd like to count us out. You would be making a huge mistake if you count out any one of us from making it big here from the Northeast San Fernando Valley. And the individuals behind me are a testimony to that. And so uh, I'd like to invite at this time another ball player whom helped make history, and that is Ricky Chaprone. Hello, everybody. And it's nice to see everyone out here today. I didn't think that this would ever happen. Um, like I said at the, at the first event we had here, um, my dad, he, he was a strict dad. And we couldn't eat, couldn't do homework till we played baseball first. And I was like, I'd come home from school and be hungry. I said, Dad, I said, Bus, my, we called our daddy Bus. Bus was, you know, everybody knew him as Buster. And we, his kids, five siblings, called him Bus. And I said, Bus, I want to eat something before I go. Boy, you better hurry up, you're gonna get left. So I go in, my mama frying chicken. I go in there, mom, she said, boy, get a piece of chicken and get in that car and go to, down into the park. And I'm gonna tell you, without that, we wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here today. And like Anthony said, you know, I'm one of the Broncos, you know, and there's others that are not here with us and it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for them. So you got to give them, you know, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my wife right there, Janet, she's a good woman. And every man needs a good woman. Because without her, without her, I don't know where I would be. And um, the Lord took five siblings, I mean, 
five people from me, my dad, my mom, my two brothers, and my older sister. And the Lord gave me her. And she got 14 siblings that she used to take care of when her mom and daddy didn't want to cook. She used to have to stand on a stool and watch her daddy show her how to cook for 14 kids. Now she cooked for me. And boy, I'm going to tell you, she can burn. But anyway, <laughs> uh, make a long story short, uh, this, uh, this park right here, like Anthony Davis said, if it wasn't for the Gophers, I mean, we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't have went where we went. But the Gophers was helping us play ball at this park. I'm talking about a ball go past you and the guy's still running around the bases, you fighting with the gopher trying to get the ball <laughs> to throw the dude out. The gopher finally released the ball and we make a hell of a play. We still get that guy out. But uh, it's a beautiful thing with the kids. I'm right now coaching a little league team right here across the street. And that park right there, they didn't let us play over there. And I know they wish they would have now for what we getting, what, you know, we uh, got from playing, you know, went to Massachusetts around the world, almost around the world. If we would have won that game in Massachusetts, the president of the United States would have, he was going to uh, have dinner with us, but we lost. And I don't know if Anthony remember this, but we had to carry the winning pitcher on our backs, pass all the fans. But me and this, rest in peace, one of the ball players, Larry Oliver, which is not here with us today, one of the best ball players we had. Um, we was like doing like this, socking him, you know, why we gotta carry this dude, just drop him. But, you know, we had to do what the coaches told us to do. But the kids have to stay in school, eat all your vegetables, listen to your parents, and uh, be persistent in what you're trying to do in life. Baseball was my thing. And I don't know, you know, what the next person thing was, but I know I wanted to play professional ball. I tried out with the Dodgers in 74. On the Dod at the Dodger Stadium. And I remember uh, Eyewitness News was there, and they, uh, Brian Gumbo, I guess that was the, the sports announcer then. He took, he was out there with me, interviewing me. How you feel, I, how, how you feel being out here on the Dodger, at the Dodger Stadium, uh, trying out for the Dodgers? I said, good, this is, this is amazing, you know? But I didn't make it. But this right here took the place of that. What's happening with us now. We were denied. Um, we was good ball players. How, why they denied us back in the days, I don't know. But I didn't care. I was just happy that we went that far to play ball. And um, I just want to say one more thing, Anthony don't remember. You, do you remember when we had a pillow fight? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> well, but you don't remember when we raided the kitchen? I stayed out of that. All right. Well, anyway, the team that was in the boys' gym sleeping on, in bed while we were sleeping in, on the floor in, in the girls' gym, I said, hey, y'all, let's go over there. Go over there and go get them. And uh, some, of, some of the players said, no, we're getting in trouble. I said, come on, man, let's go. We went over there. We had one of the biggest pillow fights you ever want to see. Feathers everywhere. And uh, then later on, I think the next night, I said, you guys thirsty? Let's go in the kitchen and get something to drink. And they was, then again, they were scared. Oh, man, we get in trouble. And about seven of them came. We went and raided the kitchen, drank apple juice and eating uh, 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 what is that stuff that the babies eat, the little uh, applesauce? 
And we kept everything messy. We didn't clean up. They said, we better get this mess up. No, let them do it. You know, we sleeping on the floor. So uh, the next day we got up, went to the park, practice, and uh, we did pretty good. We won, how many games we won? Two, lost three. And we uh, came flying back over California, coming back home from back east. Seen a lot of smoke. And we were asking the coaches, Coach, what, what's all that smoke in L.A.? What's going on? We looking down like this. And when we got off the plane, when we landed, our parents was walk, running up to the car. Hey, hey, uh, get in the car, get in the car. I said, Mom, what, what's happening? She said, burn, baby, burn. The watch riot. And when I got home, I wanted to get, go on top of the roof. I said, I asked my dad, can I go on top of the roof and see if I can see fire? He said, no, just come on in the house. But uh, anyway, it's been beautiful. All, all of you out there are so beautiful. I love you. God bless you. And um, I just want to see the little kids uh, do something with their lives, you know, uh, I'm, I'm teaching the little league team now. I'm going to show them right. I'm going to teach them right. And uh, they be crying when they strike out. I say, boy, you ain't no girl. Come on over here. Next time you go up the bat, hit that ball. So I'm right here across the street. So if you ever want to come to some of our practices or whatever, we right there. And uh, it's a all, all Hispanic team. I got one little black on there. And... Uh, he's a good little ball player too. All of them are. I love them. I love those kids. And um, we need to fix that park. We need to fix this one too. So we're trying to get a fundraiser or something. Somebody can help us, you know, and so they can play on a better park. Right now, it's 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 not suitable for for uh, little kids to play on. It's very important. But thank you. I love you. Thank you, Monica. And um, that's it. Thank you, Ricky. Although I am going to correct you. Uh, if they're really good, they'll play like a girl. All right? I'm just going to correct you on that. Because if you're a good player, you're going to play like a girl. So, um, and with that, you know, again, and, and uh, Anthony mentioned this. Uh, when we were commemorating some of the improvements at, at this park uh, that I had funded, um, it was Crystal Jackson that was instrumental in helping us to connect to this very important history at this location. And uh, unfortunately, Crystal wasn't unable to join us this morning, uh, but I'm really excited that we have Lon Grandison, uh, who's on the executive board of the Pacoima uh, Historical Society here with us uh, to share and uh, join in this, commem this special commemoration uh, that we are unveiling today. So Lon. Thank you, Monica. Um, you know, in 2016, when we began the Pacoima Historical Society, this is what we envisioned, preserving the history of this town that we all love so much. And to see these players here getting honored for something that meant so much to this community is really something special. And I really have to turn and thank Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez for making this happen. Please. Um, our president, Crystal Jackson, was really heartbroken for not being able to make this presentation. This story and, and developing this history it was her work. And I can tell you, having worked with her, she puts in so many hours in trying to make sure that the history of this town remains preserved. And she works long hours. She's also an author and a filmmaker and she takes care of a special needs child. So the work that she has done to really honor these players in this history is something that really needs to be commended. And 
not and it's not just her. You know, there are other members of the historical society who have also dedicated their efforts. Um, I'd just like to name a couple of them: Jimmy Velarde, Nancy Takayama, Rolene Neveja, uh, Tonise Thomas, and Chanel Grandison. They all are very instrumental in doing this. And I can tell you this: growing up in Pacoima in the fifth, in the '60s and '70s, there was nothing more important than baseball. I remember as a kid, I grew up on Fillmore Street. I remember as a kid strapping my glove on my bicycle handlebars and getting on my bike to ride up here to North Valley Field to watch the kids play. And it was just awesome. And the intensity they played with was something that was really special. Um, back then, we played baseball on the streets. Now, can you imagine, and for those of you who don't know the streets in Bacoima, on Fillmore Street, we played in the middle of the street, right at Fillmore and Glen Oaks. And there were no cars parked there. There was no uh, no hindrance. And the parents in the community, they welcomed us. Like like Ricky said, you know, um, you know, the parents understood that baseball was our life back then. So it's just really something that's very important here. Um, and Anthony Davis. You know, after Anthony um, participated in that 65 team, he didn't stop there. He led the way for future generations of athletes here in Pacoima, okay? And, you know, he went to San Fernando High School and on to USC where he became a five-time national champion. Um, and without Anthony, you wouldn't have seen the likes of Heisman Trophy winner Charles White who recently passed away. You, you wouldn't have seen that success. You wouldn't have seen great athletes like Kevin Williams who, who broke the 100-yard dash record back then. You wouldn't have seen the national championships that San Fernando High School earned as a football team. So honoring these players for what they did, you're not really just honoring them. You're honoring the entire community because they really perpetuated that and allowed this community and the young athletes in this community to grow. So they're to be commended and Councilwoman Rodriguez, you're to be commended for making sure that everybody knows and has become aware of this story. And thank you. So with that, you know, I would just like to say that, um, you know, we often talk about Pacoima pride. And, you know, when we had the initial event, when these players came onto the field and, and A.D. and Ricky came out and they joined in with the kids out there, you know, I could see the look in those kids' eyes because what they saw was, was youngsters who had been successful growing up in Pacoima. And, you know, you take it for granted when you're a young kid that you can just believe anything's possible. That's something you shouldn't take for granted. And many of the children here don't know that anything is possible. So when they see the success, and they see us honor the success of children who came from Bacoima, there's two words that they learn that may be the perhaps most powerful words that any kid can know and understand. And those two words are, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. So with that, you know, this is a great day, and I want to thank everybody for coming out, and thanks for having us, and um, we look forward to the unveiling of the sign here on this corner. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lon. And again, I, I too, just want to say thank you to everyone that uh, has joined us here this morning to celebrate this very special history, because it's that history that was a big change maker for a lot of young kids that were being told those kids that looked like me and my parents or that looked like Anthony and his parents. Pacoima is comprised of a very rich history of diversity, but because of the segregated acts of how people were forced to live back in the early 1950s that said that we were only allowed to live in certain neighborhoods, but they could put us all together and we just became more powerful making the greatest history that anyone ever thought possible. And we continue to exemplify what is possible today. So I thank these young men 
for what they did of their generation and for the inspiration that they leave in their wake. And for everyone that sees this sign that comes to play, whether it's at Pacoima Little League or at Hanson Dam or just driving through the neighborhood, they're gonna know that history was made here many, many decades ago, but it continues to persevere in their wake. And so, ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we unveil the square dedicated in the memory and history of the 1965 North Valley Broncos Little League.